Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Where shall I begin? That's my question. I was asked to speak on education. Uh, education where? Education in Ladakh. And uh, where to begin? It's a, such a vast subject that you can't really do justice to that in 15 minutes or 20 minutes that you have on the TED talk. And so I thought of just briefly touching some of the issues that face us. Uh, we all like to applaud ourselves, uh, pat our own backs. We have done very well. Uh, we are progressing. Ladakh has come uh, miles from the time that we went around with our sheep and goat. You know, we brag about ourselves, and that is great. That gives you a sense of uh, prestige, honor, acceptance in the society which uh, demands uh, success. And so we are successful. Sorry to interrupt. I just need a glass of water from some any corner. Uh, and so, that's enough. And so we are successful. We have had education for the last 150 years or so, the secular education, for we had um, all forms of education earlier on. It's primarily monastic education, but uh, then even the uh, agriculture education, education in the area of medicine, Tibetan medicine. So there has been a stream, uh, unbroken stream of education in Ladakh. But I would uh, primarily speak about secular education, uh, what you call the modern education, uh, or if there is anything called modern education. 150 years, plus minus 19th century, uh, we had a scientific way of looking at geography, a scientific way of looking at uh, science, on uh, historiography, learning of other languages. And so we begin with the, the whole process and the journey of secular education, uh, later part of 19th century Ladakh. Morivan School has a, a very major role in that. I wouldn't speak, like to speak on that, but uh, this evening is uh, more a panoramic view of Ladakh's education. And so I would like to uh, take you fast forward into the 20th century when uh, in the last 40 years we have made great strides as far as the modern education is concerned. The, the development that you see, the schools that you see, this hall uh, is one example where you have, this is a, we, what we call as the AV room where projections of, uh, are made of all the class texts in a digitalized form for children. So Ladakh is a, absolutely a, a, a miracle in the last 40 years. Uh, 1960s, 1970s, you wouldn't have had, uh, found a single a uh, large school here. There were little schools uh, in various corners, primary schools, uh, children having to walk 15, 20 kilometers to their school sometimes. Uh, I uh, have heard stories of my aunt and my mm, friends, older friends, who have walked all the way from uh, Chushot, that's about 20 kilometers, to lay every day and gone back to their homes in 40 kilometers of walking a day just to get education. And so, now that we have scores of school buses, it's a different story. And so, should we pack our bags? Yes, we should. Starts with the school bag, the father and the mother, great day for him to begin with the first school day, and then on to age four and five, and first primary, second primary, third primary, middle school, senior school, and then somewhere along the line, he never crosses that threshold into what you call the secondary education and the tertiary education. And there you have 
those people who have been ninth pass metric failed, ninth pass tenth failed. That's the threshold in Ladakh. Eleventh pass, twelfth failed. Never made it to the college. They can speak in English. They can do a little bit of mathematics. They know a little bit about science. They have had a smattering of all other languages, and yet they have not achieved what their father wanted. That little boy, that little girl, left the farm, left the animals. The mother had to do it all alone. The aunts had to take the sheep all by themselves. The father had to earn his own living, so that these four children, or three children, or five children, could become officers. Police officers, doctors, engineers, this thing, that thing. And lo and behold, come tenth, and don't make it. Come twelfth, they don't make it. And so, what do you do? He's educated enough to talk with the foreigners, to talk with the other people. He can take up a clerical job. He can take a blue collar job. So, let him start a travel agency. He can at least do the typing on the keyboard. <coughs> and so you have scores and scores and scores of girls and boys who have not achieved. And this is, uh, uh, what I would say, this would create an implosion someday. This would be disastrous one day. For if you have those saturation levels of students, of young people who wanted to do something and never did that, you have a society that is discontent, depression goes up, areas of frustrations go up, crime, crime goes up. And I, my concern is, this particular issue that we have to deal with. And I would ask the government, I would ask myself whether I'm giving the relevant education that this particular child requires. Could I ever begin a livelihood college for Lada? But children can make a good, decent living where the father would be satisfied. Mother and father and the son and the daughter would have a great evening meal together, all satisfied in their own little uh, job descriptions that they hold. And that's my first concern. Education be such that satisfies you to the core. Wanting to become a doctor, I'm running a raft company or a trekking company. Aim was to become a computer engineer, but could never make it to the secondary level or to the tertiary. And so I look with amazement sometimes, with jealousy sometimes, to the people who have. Second uh, issue that I would like to take up today, and that is in the area of whether we have ever uh, been pragmatic enough to leave our idealistic ideas about Ladakh. Visionaries of Ladakh, great pictures, and yet not pragmatic enough to see that Ladakh becomes a part of the larger world. I've had lots of discussions with the people. With, I, we have pulled each other's hairs. And I believe that we should be pragmatic as much as we are conservationists. You could be idealistic about Ladakh. A lady comes to me, Elijah, why do we have all these electric wires in Lake? We need power. But I, I can't take a picture because these wires come in the middle somewhere. So many wires. What do we do? Underground cables? 
We don't have the money. How do we get power in the evening? So there is an idealistic lady who comes to me, oh, if I could take a picture of the Stok Kangri or the palace, and there's a wire in between. Or the reality that I've got to face. I need power in the evening for my uh, son to read, wife to wash her, probably her clothes or something, or cook some food, boil some water. Idealism is good. And yet if idealism and idealistic viewpoints become a hassle in your total human development of a nation, then that idealism has to be relooked with a, a, with a heart of a conservationist and yet eyes of a pragmatic person. My school is supposed to be an English medium, English speaking school. And why do I have uh, to emphasize on English? Because English uh, 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 folks have the, um, uh, the day these days. The French don't. The Germans don't. The Indians don't. It's English is the language of the world. The, even the Japanese have surrendered and even the Chinese have surrendered to the English. The English language, not to the English too. And so those who promote, okay, English in class 5 level, English in class 8 level, that little fellow never gets to the university just because all universities, all good colleges, all engineering, all medicine demands a language of good English. And so we have suffered on account of this. We all have to look into whether we are pragmatic or we are just Foolishly conservative, conservationist. I'm using the word foolishly rather um, with fear and trembling because there is uh, a lot of wisdom in that particular uh, presentation as well. But then if you have got to live, you have got to live with English. I've been told that my time is up. I had a few more points, but let me skip through those and give you my last Paris. May I have your permission? And that is perpetuality. Perpetuality, long word, difficult spellings, and yet so important. To keep on going. We, had this, we have this strange ad hoc culture in India. Chalta hai, we call it in, in Hindi. It works. And as long as it works, it's okay. But we don't look to 30 years ahead, to the generation that is ahead. And the sense for per perpetuality, longevity in a program is absent. If you can run it for a day, do it. Tomorrow, who has seen? It's not mine. Today's yours. May we have that particular sense of perpetuality, the long-term vision for our education. Thank you for listening to me. But these are my heart burdens that I carry each day, even as I lead a little over 1,000 children each day, looking at their faces. Uh, whether they would be dissatisfied 20, 30 year olds uh, in a couple of years time, or they'll be satisfied young, proud Ladakhis who can build up this place. Thank you.